So hi everyone, um, I'm Kirsten Mulrennan. I am the archivist for engagement, exhibition and outreach, a bit of a mouthful, in special collections and archives in the department um, in the Glucksman Library in the University of Limerick. So I'm gonna to talk to you briefly today about some of our online resources, how we use them to supplement our daily activities such as teaching and how we design them to be simple, sustainable and scalable with the ultimate aim of fostering the information and archival literacy of our users. So first, a very quick snapshot of the digital offer in our department. This is our website, specialcollections.ul.ie, which is the first point of reference for all our students and visitors. In keeping with UL brand guidelines, the site is built in WordPress, meaning that it is as customizable as we'd like it to be without it becoming um, unwieldy or requiring advanced technical knowledge so that our staff can maintain it themselves. It has a simplistic and consistent design across all its pages, making it easy for users to navigate and search. The site hosts our blog, um, and we post updates there from our collections roughly every two weeks. We push those posts out then on our um, social media channels, so we have our own Twitter um, account, the UL Library has a Twitter account, and the UL Library website, and the University Comms website as well. The site is also home to a range of online research resources, which we add to all the time as new material becomes available. So our thematic research guides provide an overview of some of the key themes in our collection, so things like state history, military history, and the National Dance Archive of Ireland. And they allow a user to better identify sources relevant for their research questions. So in short, we want these resources to contain all the information that we would like a student or a researcher to know before they come into us. Um, that's if they read it, but that's a topic for a different day. Um, so student engagement and faculty collaboration is obviously a core function of our department and demand for teaching and learning sessions has increased significantly over the last number of years. So taking the last year, the academic year of 22-23 as an example, we hosted 37 hours of contact time with students um, during 16 undergraduate and 11 postgraduate classes across the departments of history, English, geography, Irish and the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance. And this slide shows a visualization of the kind of um, spread of the numbers by discipline. Um, so while all this data obviously changes year on year, it does give a good example of the types of different audiences that we cater to, but also the different levels of familiarization about libraries and archives within those audiences. Um, as you can see here, the, the majority of them do fall somewhere in the category of history, but just because they're history students doesn't necessarily mean that they know what an archive is or how to use it. So our website is designed to offer multiple points of entry into our collections, allowing students and researchers to access the material at whatever level they are at. So whether they have a simple question about who we are and what we hold, or a more nuanced query, such as how do I read an archival catalog, um, or um, how to understand the terminology used in the study of rare books and bindings. So COVID understandably accelerated user demand and we have expanded our online offer accordingly. So for instance, our usual 20 minute introduction to our department is now um, available online so they can access this in their own time. This has also got the added benefit of cutting down on repetition as we do encourage students to look at this before they come to class and then this leaves class time for more focused engaged activities with primary sources. So the core of our teaching content naturally includes a mix of these generic um, or reusable elements like the standard introduction video with more tailored class material requested by faculty each semester. So this can include anything from an archival um, description workshop with MA history students, a session, a session on archives and race with um, BA art students or an exploration of the city of Limerick through the lens of special collections and archives for cultural geography students. Uh, this image shows a libguide created using digitized documents um, to run an online archival description workshop during COVID, and which we now update and reuse um, each autumn. So I suppose we can thank COVID for that in some sense. Um, sustainability then is a key consideration of every resource that we create. In a busy department and with significant calls in our time in relation to teaching and learning in relation to, as well as other duties, it is important that we repurpose content where possible so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel every semester, as was mentioned earlier. So we aim to maximize our teaching and research output while um, working within the online infrastructure available to us. So pre-existing content can be used in new and creative ways. 
So for example, from our website, um, material that was gathered in the course of creating blog posts from about the Bolton collection um, has been reformatted here as a mini online exhibition. Where possible, we also try to reimagine um, class content that's created specifically or for a specific class with faculty um, as an online resource so that it can be um, used by students and researchers in other ways. And the example of this that I'm going to share with you today is the Opening a Window to the Past project, which includes instruction on reading, understanding, and researching a range of archival diaries. So this project was a collaboration between myself and Dr. Rachel Murphy in the Department of History in UL. It was funded by the National Forum for Teaching and Learning in Higher Education in 21. We're actually running a Twitter campaign this week, so if you do retweet us, you could win a notebook. Um, in 2019, Dr. Murphy and I co-taught an introduction to the transcription of the analysis of 19th century diaries as sources for social history. And following this session, we decided to develop an open, accessible, and online resource. Um, which would teach the archival skills and historical analysis the kind of basic skills that we find that students are lacking. So drawing on our cognate disciplines, it uses three diaries held at UL as working examples. And it's designed to be used both in the classroom as well as asynchronously and autonomously as required. So the main body of the resource is divided into five key lessons here, uh, supplemented with reading lists. The lessons offer both broad introduction to the work of the department and its collections, as well as specific advice um, relating to consultation of archi archival diaries and the reading and transcription of archival sources. Lessons can be read sequentially as, or they can be used as standalone guides depending on the user's area of interest. The lessons are designed for students at all levels and they do increase in difficulty as they progress. So information is outlined in a clear and simple visual format with headings and um, sections signposted and interlinked. On each page, a resource custom logo links to the resource homepage, um, while did you know boxes provide um, hints and tips for research. The diaries used in the resource were fully digitized as part of the project and are now available on the uh, newly launched UL Digital Library. So a number of value added features provide an opportunity for users to test their knowledge at the end of each lesson through short quizzes and exercises and to interrogate the diaries further with um, sample interactive document analysis. So here um, in this picture, there's a page torn out in the middle and when the user hovers over it, it kind of suggests, um, it kind of brings that to the attention of the user and kind of makes them aware of what that might mean for their interpretation and understanding of the record. And then, just for fun, users can also learn as they play, as we employed a student from UL's Bachelor of Science in Computer Game Deve Development to build us an escape room game using clues from the diaries. So this illustration summarizes the structure of the resource, demonstrating how its different modules work together and increase in depth as the user progresses, but equally how the modules stand alone for users who only wish to engage at one element at a time. While a lot of new content was written specifically for the resource, it also repurposed any relevant pre-existing teaching material where possible. The transcription lesson is a good example of this, so on the left. I have run several classes on archival transcription with a variety of different student groups over the years, and this lesson is a culmination of all this class content collated and reformatted online. Conversely, I developed a new FAQ page for the resource on the right which I now link to constantly in my teaching as it covers a variety of topics from basic literacy questions such as what are archives to those that address common student um, archival anxieties such as how do I cite archival material to those that prompt critical thinking when reading primary sources. While the immediacy, relatability and conciseness of diaries make them perfect teaching resources, it was always our aim that this resource um, is transferable in a variety of other contexts. It can be scaled up in the future, allowing us to include different archival sources and to collaborate with different faculty members for different areas of expertise. The resource has been incorporated into teaching in the Department of History since its launch, and student feedback has been highly favorable, articulating a desire for more content of this type from the department, as well as demonstrating the growth of popula popularity of online research resources like this in general. And this is an example of a recent resource built by Dr. Catherine Porter in the Department of History or geography to analyze a map from our Looney collection. 
So finally then, there are sustainability challenges, obviously, in building and maintaining resources online. Our WordPress site is hosted, which has an annual fee, but it does give us technical backup if we need it. While we aim to keep the resources on our site as simple as possible, we do rely on plugins and other tools to create interactive elements, and this is our popular advent calendar, which we run every December. While we did have a computer games design student at our disposal for the diary project, modest funding and um, sustainability planning asked that we, we made sure that we asked him to do it in Google Forms so that us non-computer game developers could maintain it um, beyond the lifetime of the project. These practical considerations of technical sustainability are relatively minimal and on balance, open educational resources such as these actually greatly increase the sustainability of the department's overall teaching and learning program as it makes both core archival literacy and digitized archival material freely available online. Thank you. <laughs>